We're back here talking Hawkeye Season 1, Episode 4 here today. Two more episodes until the wrap-up of the series, as quickly as it started, as quickly as it's going to end. But uh, good stuff so far. This was called Partners, Am I Right, obviously, with uh, with Kate and with, with Hawkeye, kind of doing their thing as we kind of continue along their pursuit of... We found out more about the watch, their pursuit of the watch. We found out more in this episode. We just talked about that last week after no mention of it since, I think, Episode 1. Uh, got the big reveal at the end of Yelena, who we all knew was going to be in the show. Um, still, I think she put up a picture about it on her Instagram, and she was she put up a post saying that Disney actually blocked her from putting up pictures from the show to not spoil it for people that didn't know she would be on the episode or forgot about her or whatever. That's a whole other can of worms. But um, this was good stuff, though. They're really teasing a lot of different things here as far as the the big bad and who it might be with this show and it might not be who we think and all that other stuff. But uh, joined, as always, by Doc Chris Mueller on the Twitter machine, BR underscore Doctor. Chris, what's going on, my man? Oh, not too much. Uh, really liked this week's episode, actually. Yeah, I thought it was good. I mean, I thought last week's was kind of a, a a come down episode, so to speak, following you know episodes one and two. But I thought this was a good one, especially with the the ending that they went with. Phil, you're back as well. Phil DL six one six on the Twitter machine. Phil, what's going on, my man? I'm great. Let's start with you, Phil. What were your overall impressions of this episode? Chris said he liked this one. What were your thoughts on it? Um, I thought this was a good. Uh episode where it kind of slowed down after all the action from last episode and so we get like more of the intimate moments like them you know, having breakfast earlier in the episode and then like the movie marathon stuff um i really like the movie marathon scenes a mm-hmm. lot and kind of going off of the movie marathon stuff when she had the you know handful of movies in her hand and then christmas vacation was one of them obviously the santa claus with tim allen one of the DVDs in that bunch was indeed Die Hard. So does that confirm that Die Hard is indeed already a Christmas movie? We won't have to get into the whole debate. We talked about this probably before. But would that confirm from Disney's end that Die Hard is indeed a Christmas movie? I think that it does. I mean, I thought I think it would be even funnier like if someone somewhere was like, man, you know, Iron Man 3, Christmas movie. <laughs> that would be great. Actually, going off of that too, I don't know if you guys have seen the preview footage for next week's episode i guess i mean without there's no spoilers obviously but i guess it's going to be taking place at some sort of party um at a notable establishment in new york city kind of giving diehard vibes a little bit people are saying so we'll see where they go with that uh chris kind of going off what we talked about last week with the watch they hadn't really mentioned it since episode one they brought it back here as a focal point that's clearly going to tie into um the big culmination reveal of whatever the show is going for Clint did say that the watch belonged to someone whose identity would be ruined or their cover would be blown if the watch fell into the wrong hand. So, very interesting. I don't know who that could be myself, but I'm curious what your thoughts were on that. Well, I kind of doubt that it's going to be this, but for a split second, I thought that maybe they were thinking about introducing Hawkeye's brother, Mm -hmm. who I know, like, isn't used in the comics nearly that much but he does have a brother who's like a criminal because hawkeye in the comics began life as a criminal they don't really do that in the mcu with this character Mm -hmm. so i don't know but like i thought maybe that was something to protect like a family member or something or maybe his father used to be a spy or two or something i don't know but it kind of seemed like it was something that I don't know, maybe isn't as big of a deal as we're making it out to be. Like, I'm sure the reveal will come eventually, but I just don't know if it's really going to matter in the grand scheme of things. Kind maybe of, it'll be more like a tease for what's going to happen in season two if they've already decided to do that. Yeah, I mean, I could see that if they don't obviously you know, pay it off by the sixth episode, I could see them doing that. Um, do you think it's more likely, going off what you just said, do you think it's more likely that it ends up being a new character that we haven't seen in the MCU before or someone that we're already aware of they might be bringing into the show for the final two episodes? I could see it being either or. The fact that the watch was like at the Avengers compound could just mean that it was part of Clint's like personal effects that were stored there somewhere. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Like How they got the costume is way more confusing to me because like did he just take it off as soon as the battle was over like i don't know so it's weird but i feel like they're downplaying the watch a little bit 
because maybe it's not actually that important or maybe it's super important and I'm just not reading enough into it. <laughs> yeah, no, I guess we'll see. It is interesting. Again, they didn't really bring it up up until now. It's not like the entire show was about this watch, so uh, you might be right in that it might not be a major reveal. Um, but I do think it's indeed a focal point, though. What about you, Phil, as far as where you see this watch thing going, updated theories, and who you could see it belonging to ultimately? Um, I didn't think it was weird that his wife knows about the watch and she kept asking about it. Mm. Um, uh, I mean, I, I do get the, uh, the feeling that he, you know, just tells his wife everything cause she seems to know everything, um, based on their conversations. But, um, I just thought it was very strange that she kept asking about the watch. It wasn't even like he would bring it up. Um, I, so that made me wonder, is it tied to her in some way? Um, like, did she used to be a S.H.I.E.L.D. agent and she retired and, you know, does the watch, like, connect to her? I don't know. Um, it seems like the watch has, like, did I read that right that, like, they were tracking the watch? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, she said that. They have the a tracker was... in it, right? Yeah. Um, well, if that's the case, then that makes me wonder, um, are they afraid that someone can um, see everywhere that the watch has been? Um. And if you could see where the watch has been, then you could trace the you could trace it back to where Clint's real house is, because nobody knows where it is. It's true. Yeah, I mean, it could be one of those things where Clint was like, he was telling Kate like, "Oh, it's you know, it, it would be bad for that person." Maybe he was just being vague, and he was just talking about himself. Yeah, maybe. Kind of like how he was being vague about the whole Ronan thing before she put it together. Mm -hmm. Yeah, maybe so. And that's what that's what made me wonder, because his wife kept asking about it. And I was like, maybe they're afraid that if someone has that watch, they could trace it back to him and his family. I don't know. I did see a theory thrown out there that maybe his wife is a, like a new version of Mockingbird. Like maybe she was a former S.H.I.E.L.D. agent and she's just not named the same way because they already used that character for Adriana Pilecki and Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Would, yeah, that, I can see that. would that explain why she knows Russian? Yeah, it would. I mean, I get the feeling that she definitely was in the know somehow, whether that meant she was a S.H.I.E.L.D. agent or something else. She was, I don't think this is just like some normal um, woman that Clint met somewhere. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think we've talked about it before. I think their relationship is interesting too, especially compared to all the other, all these other characters. Where like the guy, or I mean, more, mostly the guy has to hide his secret superhero life from the girl and whatever. And it's 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 a refreshing change of dynamic with these two, which is nice. But yeah, I, I could see her definitely factoring into it somehow. I had seen someone else say the Mockingbird thing as well. I'm not overly familiar with the character, obviously, but that would be interesting. Um, I don't know if this is going to tie into the watch at all, but we kind of saw a different side of. Jack on this show, especially the very beginning when they were interacting with Clint and then he leaves and he has that weird interaction with the mom who absolutely at the end of the day is going to be a bad guy. I mean, it's, it's not even a question. But the, Jack, though, his role on this episode was interesting because, again, we kind of got to see a different side of him. He was given these, like, he was trying to do these, uh, you know, the expressions or whatever, and he got them wrong because his English isn't the greatest. And it kind of felt like they were trying to make him more likable. Now, I may be wrong, Phil. I thought you had said something along these lines, maybe in the last couple of weeks that we spoke, where, I mean, obviously, it seems like he might be on the bad side, but who knows, but they might be setting him up to be someone beyond that, where he's a more likable, you know, good guy character. I'm not sure. Maybe I'm, maybe I'm, you know, remembering it from somewhere else, but I'll, I'll start with you, Phil, as far as what you thought of Jack on this episode and where you see that going. Is that just a red herring, or do you think he might actually be an endearing character, ultimately? I think he may be. I think people are trying to shuffle it around. Like, well, we got the Sloan um, Limited um, reveal that he's CEO and they're linked to uh, the tracksuit mafia. Mm -hmm. I think that's all to try and throw us off the scent of, you know, her mother being involved, which she's clearly involved. Mm -hmm. um, but the thing that I noticed, because I've been wondering since the first episode, what is his fascination, fascination with the Ronin sword? And I was like, man, I wonder if he ki if he killed Maya's um, dad. I wonder if that's him in the in the Ronin suit. Oh, that would be interesting. Yeah, I was because wondering. He that, yeah. is really like obsessed with that sword. Yeah, that's very and interesting. And Clint just steals it. So like now we're gonna have to find Jack realizing that it's gone and probably immediately putting together that it's Clint. 
Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I, that immediately made that's that's the two and two I put together. I was like, yeah, because they've got to they've got to figure out a way to to close the loop on the Maya storyline and get her spinoff. Um, if because if she thinks that it's Clint, like she's never going to stop chasing Clint. Um, yeah, I kind of feel like maybe it's not Clint in the suit, and if it's not Clint, then uh, Schwartzman makes a lot of sense. Um. If it's not Schwartzman, who else could it be? Um, I don't know. Yeah, that's an interesting theory. I didn't really think about that, but like one of the first things that came through my head, I think it was in episode three when they were talking about Maya's backstory and they showed her father getting killed. I don't know. Maybe I'm just looking too much into it, but just based on how what they showed, like you see him killing the father, but someone in the Ronin suit, but you don't actually see their face. You don't see actually any, I don't think any front part of their body. I would have to go back and watch it, but then he escapes the window. Would, because I know Clint had said in Endgame, like I've done a lot of bad things, but would he actually kill someone that was innocent though is my question. Because I thought when, after we saw that footage, it doesn't exactly put him in the best of light. Um, and then we come to find out, okay, I guess their explanation is that he did bad things. That's his excuse, I guess. Um, I don't know. I, I always thought that was weird after we first saw the footage of Ronan, quote unquote, killing the father. It just didn't really seem like something that Hawkeye would do. Uh, would you agree with that, Chris, as far as like it could end up being Jack as opposed to Clint himself? It could. Um, the guy who stabbed the dad like probably was just some stunt actor. Like he definitely didn't look like he had a big enough torso to be Jack. Mm hmm. But, you know, that stuff's always weird. Like, it's kind of like how it was kind of obvious that it wasn't the girl playing Taskmaster in that outfit most of the movie during yeah. Black Widow. Mm -hmm. So, I don't know. But I did think it was interesting that the beginning of this episode, like, they almost tried to make Jack a little more likable during some of those scenes. Like, he was a little less creepy than he has been in past episodes. And, like... You know, they give him this kind of funny little trait of always getting the phrases wrong and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But I do also think that as soon as Clint left, that Kate's mom was immediately on the phone with Valentina. Like, it seems like that's who probably sent Valentina to go get Yelena yep. to go after Clint. That yeah. would make sense, um, yeah. I, if anything, I think trying to make Jack look look like more of a good guy here, quote unquote, I don't necessarily think that means that he's not behind anything. I think that that just means he's being used by Kate's mom. Yep. I mean, we mentioned, I think it was, again, last time they, they kind of blur together, but we talked about the role that the father may or may not have in any of this, her actual father, uh, Kate's father, that is, who we believe was killed by the mom or may still be out there. Um, you had mentioned, Phil, like, again, I think it was last time, where we talked about how he could be the one in charge of it all, but obviously he's, you know, since died, but he was the one that was in charge of it, you know, up until he had died, the mob or, or whatever with the tracksuit mafia. Um, do you think, kind of going off that with updated theories and whatever, do you think we actually end up seeing him and he actually could still be alive? We haven't really seen or heard anything about the dad since that first episode. It's got to come back around that the mom had something to do with his death or fake death or whatever. Um, I just feel like, especially with the mom, she's becoming increasingly more skeptical as far as, like, more of a sketchy character as far as how she's come across. And that whole conversation she had with Clint by the elevator was just weird. She's like, oh, yeah, you're going to back off the case, right? Like, that's... Bad guy 101. So clearly she's involved, but do you think we're going to come to find out that she was the one that killed the dad? Or Again, kind of going off Phil, what you said last time, uh, what role he plays in all of this. Was he the person in charge of the tracks and mafia, etc., etc.? Um, I think we're probably going to see the dad again in a flashback, but I think he's probably still dead. Mm -hmm. um, and I think if he... <laughs> I think if we do see it in flashbacks, we're probably going to see like some connection with... Um, with Kate's mother and just how, you know, how he actually died. Um, I still think that there's a strong case that he might have been connected as well. Um, just, I just, just the, the way that they mirrored the scenes with her and, and Maya and how we find out her dad was, was, you know, connected to his tracksuit mafia as well. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if he was, uh, you know, in on it or a part of organized crime as well. Cause he is in the comics. Mm-hmm. What about you, Chris, as far as what the dad's role could ultimately be? 
I'm not sure. I don't know if the dad will play that big of a part going forward. Like, I think setting him up to be like a caring father that she loses early on may have been more just to show how much that affected her than anything else. I I don't know. It feels like if he was going to be involved in anything, we would have already gotten some kind of bigger indication. I'm still skeptical on whether Kingpin's going to be involved at all. I know a lot of people are getting their hopes up because, oh, they confirmed Charlie Cox is back, so they're probably just getting ahead of the Kingpin reveal. And it's like, maybe, but, you know, I could also see this being, like I said, like some of it could be set up for season two. Like not everything has to pay off this year if they're planning on doing another season just like with Loki. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the big part of the reason why I think he's going to end up connected is because um, a big theme of the show so far has been duality. And it's like, like either they've shown us that, you know, a good guy is not as good as we think they are, whether that be Clint actually being Ronan or Maya's dad actually being connected to the mafia. Um, or, you know, eventually um, Kate's mother looking like a good guy and ended up being a bad guy. I think they've done that flip back and forth like that. We don't we we don't know. Everybody is like multifaceted. And so that's why I think they're going to go back to that with her dad as well. Yeah, I could see that. Uh, that's why I think he might just be playing a bigger role. And I mean, there's a good chance, like you said, Chris, that we may not see him again or he may not be not maybe not not mentioned, but he may not really factor anything important. But I just get the feeling that he might be. But you guys touched upon it with the Kingpin thing. Obviously, the Charlie Cox news came out from Kevin Feige himself. Uh, there were even more teases dropped on this episode, I think, with just certain stuff they said. And I don't know, there was a lot of people getting their hopes up. Um, so let, let's talk about that because I know I forgot who it was exactly, but someone involved in the show, a pretty important person, I believe. I don't know the name off the top of my head. I'd have to go look it up. But while promoting the upcoming episode, kind of the same thing with WandaVision where they threw it out there. Oh, this is going to be you know, an internet breaking moment coming up in the fifth episode, and it's going to be the biggest one so far, right before the big finale of this season. And a lot of people are thinking that's connected to Kingpin. If it's not Kingpin, I'm not really sure what else that would be in reference to. And even if it's something that was like underwhelming, um, I don't know what else that would be, honestly. Aside from, I don't think they, would, I don't think the internet would blow up in their words if, if the dad resurfaced. I mean, it's got to be something along those lines. And we've already got the Yelena reveal, which we'll get back to in a second. But Phil, what do you think that could be, and, and could that be Kingpin? I know you're skeptical about his upcoming appearance or lack thereof on this show. Uh, but if it's not Kingpin, what do you think that could be in reference to? Uh, I don't know. If it's not the Kingpin reveal, I think it's probably like finally the, like the smoking gun that proves that her mother is behind everything. Mm-hmm. Um, but I'm not going to get my hopes up that it's Kingpin. There are definitely a ton of clues that it could be Kingpin. Um, but yeah, I, I, you have to wait and see at this point. <laughs> yeah. Chris, I know you said that you don't think it's going to happen, but is it something that you would be happy with if they did end up going that direction on this next episode or the season finale or whatever with, uh, Vincent D'Onofrio in that role as Kingpin? I mean, I'd love to see Vincent D'Onofrio back as Kingpin. He was one of the best parts of the Daredevil show. Um, I mean, if if we're thinking that Uncle is somebody that we've already seen in the MCU and it's not Kingpin, I would love it if this ended up just randomly being Sam Rockwell for some dumb <laughs> reason. Like, Why did I know you are going to say that? Yeah. Just give me any excuse to get that guy back in the MCU, please. <laughs> I think it's inevitable. I know this isn't related to the show, but if even if it's not Hawkeye, I feel like they probably will, right? I know he was involved in one of those shorts they did, All Hail the King, many years ago. That was a while ago, but I well, think... that was Kingsley. Was it? Yeah, that was Ben. No, no, uh, he, he was in that... Justin Hammer was in that jail scene. Like, very briefly, I think. He was in it very briefly. He was he was in... When he, when he went in there, when he first got in jail, he's there. Like, he doesn't have a speaking line, I don't think, but he's in there. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, I just hmm. remember seeing him real... Br- I think he actually might... I think he does say something, like him about the prison food or something like that. But, I mean, is he that busy now? Or they don't, you don't think they could land him? Or you don't think they have any interest in bringing him back? I mean, they're bringing back random-ass characters, like, you know, Abomination for the She-Hulk show. I mean, I think it's only inevitable before they bring back his character, if only for a smaller role, right? Well, and his career has gotten so much better since then. Like, he's won an Oscar. People actually are taking him seriously now. But personally, I'd love to see him come back and play the same smarmy little shithead that he was in Iron Man 2. Like, 
I don't care how accurate a portrayal like a character like Justin Hammer is to the comics. So for Sam Rockwell to basically just come in and be Sam Rockwell while he's playing this character, like, give it to me more. Like, I, <laughs> I mean, people don't want to admit it, but that is essentially what Robert Downey Jr. came in and did. He came in and played Robert Downey Jr. for parts of this movie. I mean, he, he also is a great actor, but uh, parts of that character are not comic accurate. Yeah, and it's one of those characters that, like, he's not super important. Like, he's not Captain America. You can change whatever you want about Justin Hammer, and I don't think too many people are going to be mad. But, yeah, I just want him to come back at some point. There's been teases um, of, of Hammer Tech, like, since then. I can't remember when the last one was. But there was one in Luke Cage season one as well. Wasn't the bullet that actually hurt Luke Cage a hammer tech invention? Right, Phil? I don't remember. Um, it might have been. Um, but yeah, there's there's plenty of room to bring him back. Like, you can bring him back in the Armor Wars show. Um, they're doing an Ironheart show as well. Like, I assume if you bring him back, it's going to be something tied to Tony's legacy. Yeah. Yeah, that would make sense. I forgot about those titles, too, and that would probably be where he would most logically factor in. But, you know, we talk about a potential second season as far as what they could be doing going forward um, with Clint. Do you guys think that Clint would actually be on the second season, or would he just pass the torch to Kate at the end of this? Would Yelena be involved? Because I feel like a dynamic between those two and them getting their own show. Because beyond this, I don't know when we would see Yelena again. I'm not saying that we'll never see her again. I just don't know really where she factors in. Um, would would that be something you guys would want to see? Uh, Phil, I'll start with you as far as a second season without Clint, but Yelena kind of taking that role instead. Yeah, I'd be interested in a second season. Um, I I still believe at, at this point that uh, Clint's probably going to retire after this. Mm-hmm. After this season or after the show in general? Yeah, after, after this season, I feel like he's probably going to go back to living a normal life with his family. Watching the Christmas movies and, and, and putting the decorations on the tree and all that other stuff. Uh, what about you, Chris? I mean, Jeremy Renner did already do like make comments about this. Like, yeah, I'd love to see a second season get made. So I feel like if a second season got made, he'd have to be involved somehow, even if it was for like a couple episodes, not necessarily the whole thing. Um, as far as Yelena goes, like... I don't care where she pops up. I just really like Florence Pugh in the role, so I'm willing for her to be in anything. Yeah. Um, I could see her being involved with Captain America 4 somehow. Okay. You I think mean, she'd still be tied to... about that. Would she still be tied to Valentina, you think, or would she be on her own? I don't know. It depends on how this whole Clint thing works out. Once he gets through to her and lets her know what really happened and yeah. that... And like makes it so she doesn't have some grudge against him anymore. Then maybe she'll realize that Valentina has been manipulating her. But I don't know. We'll see. Yeah, there's a lot of different ways they can go with this. We still got two episodes left. Um, we'll see what they got in store for next week. Not to let this overshadow that or get overshadowed rather by Spider-Man: Far From Home coming out. Not Far From Home. Uh, no Way Home rather coming out next Friday as we speak right now. So uh, that's going to be exciting as well. But they're closing the year on a hot stretch here between Hawkeye and No Way Home. And we still got plenty to look forward to in uh, 2022 as well. I know they're they're uh, premiering the Book of Boba Fett show, actually. I think the very final Wednesday of 2021, if I'm not mistaken. So, again, like I said, a lot to look forward to. But was there anything else from this episode that we didn't talk about that I may have glossed over by accident? Uh, I, think I just it, think right? the... I just think the way that, that he eventually told her that he's Ronan was very well done. Mm-hmm. Um, I think her being sh- not necessarily shocked by it like i feel like she kind of knew but she didn't want to admit it Mm -hmm. um and everything he revealed there and just like the change in her demeanor when she realized that you know he's technically not a superhero he's a murderer he's a murderer um and he was a murderer before he became hawkeye and then he went on this streak of being a murderer as ronan and you could see the shift in what she thought about him in that moment and I still think she looks up to him, but I still I think that that just changed like their dynamic a little bit. 
Yeah, I was surprised that they actually, because we all kind of expected, I thought, for you know her to find out or for him to tell her, and that was what kind of drove them apart. But she actually stayed, you know, loyal to him up until he was like, no, just you know, get out of here. I don't want you to get hurt. Blah blah blah. And obviously, they come back together in the next episode. But I, I wouldn't, I didn't think that would be what ultimately led to them going their separate ways, you know, albeit briefly. But uh, no, yeah, I thought that was well done. Um, any other thoughts on that, Chris? As far as the uh, you know reveal there that he was Ronan to Kate. I mean, I liked that she basically figured it out, mm-hmm. but yeah, the way he described himself, like I'm a weapon, they just point, point me in the right direction and I take out the right people. But, um, yeah, I liked a lot of the character work they did in this one. Like I was a big fan of the little montage of them getting along during the movie marathon stuff and him sort of teaching her how to be accurate with other things besides arrows. Mm-hmm. Um, that I don't know like- if this would. Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. No, no, good. Go ahead. Nah, I didn't. I didn't. I don't know if this was just me, but him flicking the coin um, and saying he's um, knows how to knock out somebody out with a coin. I kind of felt like that was a tie back to Ultimate Comics, where um, he was using his fingernails to kill people. Like he was flicking his knee, he was flicking his fingernails off. <laughs> um, they just didn't want to go the most gruesome route as possible, and they used the coin instead. <laughs> It also felt to me like, I don't know if they would ever actually use the same guy from the Netflix show, but like, that was a very bullseye kind of thing too. Like bullseye is just known for making anything into a weapon. And if Fisk is somehow involved, it would not because bullseye didn't die in the daredevil show. Did he? No. So yeah, like, I don't know who that actor is who played him or if he's doing anything else these days. But like, I liked the daredevil version of bullseye. So I think it'd be cool to see him brought in again somehow. But yeah, I I just thought that this episode did a really good job sort of slowing down the action until that little fight scene on the roof later, which I thought was really funny when he shoots the little grappling hook arrow and sets up a line and then she just gets stuck in the middle. (laughs) Yeah, it was great. Yeah, uh, there were so many good parts of that scene. Of course, um, Yelena doing a Superman pose, like she has she has adapted the superhero pose to <laughs> her fighting style now, um, and like them outright referencing the Boromir scene and like Kate falling off of the roof and yeah, and pausing for a second. Um, yeah, all of that stuff was good. Um, I am curious, like. Has he come into contact with other widows? Because he seemed to he seemed to know right away that she was a widow. Well, she had that thing on her arm, which seems to be the the signature yeah. tool of that group. Yeah, she she had stingers, but I mean, she had like the red stingers, like the ones from the red room. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know. It just made me wonder has has he come in contact with another uh, widow outside of Natasha before? And is like. Is there still some kind of loose organization of widows somewhere? Like, did some of them stick together and they're just their own little group of assassins now? Because we saw that one black widow in Shang-Chi, and then now they're saying that, like, if Clint didn't know that the Red Room got taken out, I'd be surprised. Yeah. Like, yeah. It, that seems like something that even in the short amount of time that they were together again, like she would have told Clint about like, Hey, by the way, like saved my sister and the red room's gone. <laughs> that, was, <laughs> like, that was a long trip to Vormir. They had to have a lot to talk about. Yeah. So I don't know. It's all strange, but I just really like that this show is, it's like laying the groundwork for these potential reveals, but not in a way that's making it. So people like, I don't think it's going to be as upsetting as when Mephisto doesn't show up, you know, like, <laughs> yeah, like if Kingpin doesn't show up, I don't think people are going to make a huge deal out of it because that's something I think everybody knows, like fans have sort of overblown. Marvel's really done nothing to stoke those rumors. Yep. So we'll see, but I just want Vincent D'Onofrio back in the MCU in general. Like if they're going to do more Spider-Man movies, Kingpin would be a great villain for one of them. He's just one of those guys that you could insert into a couple of different situations with a couple of different heroes and have him, you know, be the big bad. 
Yeah, uh, it makes sense to me. Um, I've definitely noticed more than once that they are going out of their way to not show us Avengers Tower, and I keep wondering why that is. Like, they, clearly they're going to go back to Avengers Tower because they referenced it in Spider Man that somebody bought it, um, but they just will not show it. Like, even when they show the skyline, like it seems like it's darker over that area where where the tower is. Mm-hmm. Mm. Do you think we get that reveal yeah. in uh, No Way Home by any chance? Because that's you know also taking place in New York City. Oh man, I would not be surprised if Oscar bought it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that that's a very likely scenario. Actually, I mean, it's it could also be one of those things where like they just didn't have any more ideas for the tower, so they're sort of phasing it out. Yeah, I I definitely think they're going to show it again at this point because I think them making a point to not show it at all is very telling. Um, I don't know. There's got to be a reason why they're doing that. You think it would be Oscorp if they're bringing back Green Goblin for this movie from another universe? Um, That's why I think there is an Osborne from this universe Mm -hmm. that they haven't mentioned yet that might be introduced in a new Spider-Man movie. Interesting, interesting. Yeah, there's a lot of different ways they can go with it. I know that kind of bleeds into uh, uh, No Way Home and coming out next Friday. Phil, you said you're seeing it Thursday. Chris, I, I, I wish you the best of luck trying to avoid spoilers on the timeline for as, <laughs> for as long as you wait. It, it's going to be a landmine on there. Yeah, I mean, it. It we'll see how it goes. I'm not too concerned with it, though. Like I, like I said before we started recording, I feel like all the big rumored reveals are already out there to where I'm not going to be surprised by anything. Yeah, you'll just enjoy it. It won't be, like, shocking or anything, but uh, I don't know. Phil, you said there could be a bigger bad at hand here that people aren't expecting, so who knows, right? Yeah, I I, I think when they put out that report um, that they're only allowing the press to see 40 minutes of the movie is very telling. Mm-hmm. I've never heard of any studio doing that before. Do you think Eternals ruined that for, for other people because of, you know, the uh, post credit scene leaks getting out from that? Mm, I don't know. Because I know that uh... maybe, but I also feel like something probably happens really big right at the forty-five minute mark, uh-huh. and that is what they're worried about. Like, you know, at this point, everybody's pretty sure that Andrew Garfield and Tobey Maguire are in it, and one of them probably gets introduced like right at that point, or it'll be some crazy quick thing that like is really yeah. important, but. You know, I, I have heard of other movies actually doing this in the past, but it's been a long time and none of them were Marvel things. Like, I want to say that that critics who got to see the first, like, 30 minutes of Avatar had to wait until opening day to see the rest of it, just like everybody else. Oh, wow. It was, it was some big, big, like, sci-fi fantasy franchise. Maybe it was one of the recent Alien movies, like Prometheus or whatever, you know, mm-hmm. but yeah, it, it's, it's not common. So it definitely feels like it, it also feels like that was done intentionally because now all these critics are going to go out there and be like, Hey, they only let us see the first 40 minutes and that's going to stoke even more interest. And Oh my God, why would they only let them see 40 minutes? Mm-hmm. Well, there's gotta be something big at minute 41. We got to go see this <laughs> minute 41. <laughs> like, yeah. you know, people can say whatever they want about, Marvel movies being like cookie cutter and a lot of all this other stuff and maybe like, you know, two PG 13 for the violence and whatever, but man, they're brilliant when it comes to the way they market stuff and the way that they let like the fans do so much of their marketing for them just by talking about these things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah, but see, that's why I think it's more than just that, we're possibly going to see the other two Spider-Men in this movie. I think there's there's definitely other reveals that they have under the, up their sleeve. Well, we know there's like one villain, or at least maybe two, that they haven't revealed in the trailers, right? Yeah, I think so. I mean, like we've seen we've seen glimpses glimpses of Osborn, but um, we haven't like seen like him outside of the mask. Um, I don't know. Like they keep showing that like clip of him in the hoodie and it looks like Willem Dafoe um I don't know I wonder if maybe it's one of those things where they got Willem Dafoe to do like outside of the mask stuff and voice stuff but maybe it's just a different guy in there and it's just cheaper to do with the hood but Mm -hmm. that's also more comics accurate that look with the hood yeah slightly anyway do you tell me that we're not getting James Franco back as Harry Osborn 
I don't know. I think it'd be really funny if, like, I, I do have a sneaking suspicion Venom is going to show up. Oh, yeah. Gee. Yeah. How do you not do what they did at the end there in that post credit scene and then not have him show up? Even if it's like a five second cameo, even if it's for a post credit scene as a joke. But I think it'd also be really funny, like, if they manage to actually get Topher Grace again and have the two Venoms. Like, That's what I was hoping, yeah. <laughs> they wouldn't do even that. Even if it's just for like 30 seconds. Yeah. It would be hilarious to me. I think that'd be it. That would be very self aware. And I think, I think they would do that. I don't think they will, but that was something I was hoping for as well going into this movie because I think that would make for a great moment. Just to kind of rectify that third movie. I'm actually yeah. in the process of going back and watching the old ones and I've purposely waited to watch that third one again because I just know. Oh, you know what? What if what if the big reveal that comes is finally getting Miles Morales? Like we finally get introduced to him. That would yeah, that would be interesting. I mean, this whole Spider Verse sequel that they just released a trailer for or a teaser trailer or whatever like that's got people talking again and this seems like it's a loose adaptation of spider-verse stuff to begin with so yeah i could see this being where we finally get our miles morales even if it's just the introduction of him and it's not him in the suit mm-hmm. yeah because they planted so that cool. seed in, in in homecoming and they never went back to it in far from home with um with with dan with with Glover's character, I forgot, you know, uh, yeah, with Miles Donald, Morales, yeah. Donald Glover, I, I always mix him up with Danny Glover, Danny, Donald Glover, I'm a Lethal Weapon fan, I should probably know this, um, <laughs> but yeah, yeah, I think that would be cool if they did that, especially with the new, it is interesting they dropped the trailer now, ten months in advance, and it was a good two and a half minutes, like a preview of that film, so, it's it's interesting, um, that would be cool, there's there's a lot of different ways, I don't want to speculate all these possibilities, and like, none of them happen, but I'm sure like one of them will at least come to fruition, so, We'll see, but like I said, Chris, I, I wish you the best of luck in trying to avoid... If there is any big spoiler, <laughs> try to... Uh, you know, I don't know when you're going to be seeing it after Christmas or whatever, but uh, I wish you luck in trying to avoid it. Uh, thank you. We'll see what happens. <laughs> we'll How talk- about, I, I just realized this when they when I looked at the trailer for Into the Spider-Verse. I didn't realize all this time that Haley Stanfield is Gwen I, <laughs> Into the Spider-Verse. Oh, yeah. I, I yeah. didn't know that either. Yeah, that. she's got... She's got two big comic characters going right now. And I mean, three if you count the girl and she played in Bumblebee. Mm-hmm. I did not know that either. I saw that trailer and I saw people talking about that on the timeline last week. I'm like, wait, wait a second. Has she been Gwen Stacy this whole time? I had no idea. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah, she was Gwen in the last movie too. That's nuts. I haven't seen her in really anything up until this show. I've, I've heard the name before, but I haven't really. I, I didn't see Bumblebee. That was the John Cena Transformer movie, right? Yes, she okay. was like the main character in it. Um, I mean, I think the main thing everybody knows her from is those Pitch Perfect movies. Yeah, I think she was in this, one of the sequels, right, or something? She was in like two and three, I think. Okay. I, I, don't, I don't remember if she was in the first one because I don't really remember much about those movies. They were yeah. kind of like, I saw them once and then they immediately left my consciousness. But <laughs> Yeah, she was, in, uh, she was in True Grit too, right? Oh man, she was, wasn't she? That was a while ago. Yeah. Yeah, she was the little girl that got kidnapped, wasn't she? Yep. Yeah, I like Haley Steinfeld as an actress. Um, I can't say I like everything she's been in, but I think she's good, and I think she's like perfect casting for this. Yeah. Uh, I was trying to get Jeff on here today, but he was busy. But me and him were DMing about it last night. Like the chemistry that she has with Jeremy Renner, like being a completely non-romantic kind of thing is good. Yep. And especially because it would be creepy. He's literally old enough to be her father. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, that would be weird, but yeah, I really like Haley Steinfeld in this. I'm looking forward to seeing what else they do with her, but um, yeah, I hope she sticks around for the long haul cause she's still very young. So she could have many years of appearances in front of her if she wants to. Yeah, yeah, she's in her early 20s, I think. Actually, I think today, as we record on Saturday, today's her birthday. I don't know how old she turns, though. Maybe 23 or something? I don't know. I think she might be a little older than that. Because mm-hmm. I think she was already in her 20s during one of the Pitch Perfect movies when she's supposed to be, like, 18. Oh, okay. And that was, yeah, that was a couple of years ago, yeah. Oh, she, okay. So she just turned 25 today. Oh, okay. That makes sense. So yeah. she's only three years older than the character she's playing, which is a nice change for her because <laughs> she was playing a 17-year-old when she was, like, 23 in Transformers, so. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, that is a nice change. I think they actually said her age on the show is 22 at this time, I think. Um, yeah, they did. Yeah, 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 yeah. So that's not a far stretch at all. But no, she's great. I hope we see more of her coming out of this show, uh, whether it be a second oh, season or something real else. real quick. Mm -hmm. So I've started looking up some of the art from the Matt Fraction series and stuff, mm -hmm. and it seemed like that thing with him taking all the pina colada mix and tying it to him as ice bags, like that's right out of that comic, isn't it? Um, yeah, a lot of this stuff is, is straight from that run. Like, um, it basically just shows how, like, this is just a normal dude who's a, in a little over his head with these superheroes, but because he's so good, he's able to keep up. But, like, yeah, at the end of the day, he's just sore as shit. <laughs> and <laughs> I liked that they actually showed him, like, trying to take some time to recover. Um, yeah, the, the, the T-shirt that uh, Kate wore this episode is also straight from the comic. Um oh. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff that they've taken straight from the comic. Um, the apartment they stay in, um, I think it's a reference to West Coast Avengers or something like that. Um, yeah, you I think her aunt is going to end up being something important. Well, her aunt, um, I can't remember her name, uh, but her aunt in the comic, well, she's not her aunt in the comic, but that character in the comic um, owned the, the mansion that the West Coast Avengers lived in. Okay. And she's like a silent movie star. It's the same. Like that's that's what they're referencing with all the posters on the wall. Um, the cool thing that I thought about the poster scene is um, uh, when <laughs> she wrote on the poster and she was, she was like, "Are you sure that's a dry erase?" <laughs> he goes, yeah. "She tried to erase it." And the thing that I didn't notice until I looked at it the second time is with the part that she tried to erase with the Ronin part. And I was like, "Ah, you can't <laughs> you can't erase the what? Ronin." I don't remember what movie poster was that on. Um, it was probably one of those movie posters in the background of the apartment because, you know, her aunt has all of her movie posters around because she's a movie star. Hmm. Going off of that real quick, I forgot to mention this. You guys will probably know more about this than I, uh, than I would. As far as the LARPers that got brought back in this episode, wasn't one of them based off of an actual character named Bumblebee? Oh, um... One of them is based off of a Hawkeye villain. Um, okay. Bombshell. Bombshell, right? not Bumblebee. Yeah, we were talking about Bumblebee. Bombshell, yeah, yeah, Bombshell. Oh, <laughs> yes, yes. the girl who went and got the arrows, and she was like, this is my duffel bag. Yeah, they, yeah, yeah, she was like, my wife gave it to me or something, yeah. Um, yeah, that's interesting. Um, I have a feeling that we're going to see those cosplayers dressed up in Avengers costumes at the end of this, because... <laughs> Let's face it, the one dude bringing the Ronin costume to his little LARPing event means, like, they can pretty much do whatever they want. It grills. It grills, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, it, I have a feeling that we're going to see, like, Hawkeye and Kate will probably just be in, like, Viking costumes or something. Or she'll finally get him into some ridiculous costume that looks like his comics costume. But, yeah, I think the rest of them are going to look like Avengers. It's going to be funny. <laughs> Yeah, that's got to be where this is going, especially because she seemed not so sold on it initially, but then she ended up like kind of falling for the idea um, when we saw her in the next scene. But you could tell. Am I the only one who would love it if Marvel just decided to produce an actual version of that Rogers musical I'm... and just like do film it once, put it on Disney Plus as a joke, and just be done with it? Like, I think that would be amazing. I feel like they may have, honestly. I mean, they they put Hamilton on Disney Plus last year, and obviously this wouldn't be a, a serious production, but. I think if enough people ask for it, and I think Marvel fans would totally eat that up, I don't see why not. I think it'd be really funny. Like, the MCU takes itself pretty seriously, but there is random funny shit in it sometimes, and that would just make me so happy. Yeah, like when they, I mean, not the exact same thing, but like when they release the, uh, what, the Zemo cut from uh, Falcon Winter Soldier after yes, the sack? exactly. You know? Something like exactly. that. They're aware. Like two they know minutes of. Two minutes of Zemo dancing, like why? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but it's funny. That's why. Exactly, it was funny. I'll never forget that. So yeah, no, I, I I was I forgot about that, but that would totally be something I think Disney could do, and they might do. And I don't know if they would go back and refilm it. I feel like they may have already done that, and they may put it out at some point as a surprise. But who who knows? Maybe it'll be in the I don't know post credit scene or something. But we'll see. We still got two more episodes to go, and Spider Man No Way Home next Friday as we speak right now as well. So. Lots to look forward to, but we'll be back next week breaking down episode five. Looking forward to it, especially the rumors of 
a, a Twitter breaking moment or true, but again, don't want to get your hopes up because you know you know how these things go. But we'll see. Uh, Chris, you're on the Twitter machine at br underscore doctor. Phil, you're on Twitter at phil dl six one six. Guys, this has been great. Thanks again, and uh, I look forward to chatting with you next week. Thanks. Thanks.